So this week we're talking about water moles or oomycetes. This is a field of peppers that has a, an infestation of Phytophthora. So water molds were previously classified as fungi. You may still find some sources online that call it a fun fungus, but it's not. It infects fibrous roots, it infects foliage and fruit, and it can survive for long periods of time in the soil. So it's got asexual spores and sexual spores and just the thing to remember here is that it's able to survive in various conditions for several years. So once you have it, it's very challenging to get rid of it and you're really going to want to use, especially if it's in the soil, use plant material that is resistant to any of these diseases. So the common diseases found in this group are damping off, uh, pythium. Pythium is not just damping off, but and there are other diseases that use that common name of damping off, but pythium is one of them. Phytophthora, there's several species of Phytophthora, and then downy mildew. So this is what I'm talking about with damping off. You can see that uh, right at the base of the stem, right near the soil, it the uh, disease has taken hold. You can see the fruiting bodies there. It basically gets sunk in and then the plant collapses. Okay, here's Phytophthora lateralis on Port Orford Cedar. We've talked a little bit about this in conifers. Um, very susceptible, unfortunately, one of our natives. Here's downy mildew on lettuce. And so here is a uh, disease cycle of Phytophthora cactorum, another type of Phytophthora that is found on apple trees. Um, again, as I'm saying, is the thing to think about is that it can survive for a number of years, especially in the soil. Here's mycelium. Mycelium is uh, the vegetative part of the disease. Here is zoospores. Once they attach to the root system, they in initiate infections very quickly, and this can be as little as two hours. So if you've got the right environment, it's definitely going to occur. It can actually move from one disease plant to another healthy one in saturated soil. So, you know, this is one of those situations where environment can make such a difference. Pythium seed rot, damping off, root rot. Uh, hosts include plants, all types of plants at all stages, cuttings. Uh, so what the pathogen does is it produces enzymes that break down the cell walls and destroys the membranes and actually can survive in the soil either in spores, which are the uh, sexual form, or mycelium, which are the uh, asexual form. So extremely moist soil for long periods of time is going to help this disease to take hold. Uh, soil temperature, um, if the soil temperature is too low for the plants that need high temperatures, they're going to be more susceptible. If the soil temperature is too high for plants that need low temperatures, they're going to be more susceptible to these diseases. So symptoms include sunken plant, stunted plants, root tips that are brown and die. Plants wilt in the middle of the day and may recover at night. And this isn't due to a wilt like you haven't, or a, a drought wilt. You haven't watered it and it recovered. This is the plants showing that wilt at midday and then coming back on at night without any sort of watering happening. And then the plants yellow and die.
So here's that tip here. Uh, the rot may proceed up the stem from the roots. The outer portion of the root actually pulls off, so you just have a bare strand of vascular tissue remaining. Here we've got Pythium on Grand Fur. Pythium on Vinca Minor. Here's Pythium on Watermelon. You can see the one on the right is a very healthy set of roots. On the left you've got very diseased roots. So the way you would manage Pythium is to keep the soil well drained, improve air circulation around the plants, a plant when growth is optimum, avoid over fertilization, rotate your crops, and of course disinfection, disinfection of all tools and surfaces that it comes in contact with. And that, that should be standard anyway. So Phytophthora root rot um, and this Phytophthora lateralis is what I was talking about earlier for the um, Port Orford Cedar. So this can get used, Cypress, Heaths and Heathers, Azaleas, Pieris, Rhododendron, and Mugo Pine. So it's a broad spectrum set of diseases. So Phytophthora often attacks the roots and then it spreads into the trunk of the host plant. You get the discoloration of, fo of foliage, eventually it withers completely, and of course death occurs. Okay, so these are three species of Phytophthora, Phytophthora cinnamoni. It's in the soil, hits the roots only. Phytophthora cactorum hits the crown while leaving the roots and trunk alone. And then Phytophthora lateralis is like Phytophthora cactorum, but its main host is lost in Cyprus. Here we have Phytophthora cinnamoni on oak. So it's not just Phytophthora lateralis, Phytophthora cinnamoni also kill Port Orford cedars. Here we have a row of cedars. And often what happens is uh, not only is it spread through equipment and animals and water, but root grafts occur underground that will connect these trees and they will all get it. So the symptoms include uh, the small roots first. The inner bark turns cinnamon brown. Generally there's a sharp line between infected and healthy tissues and I know that sounds like it should be, be abiotic, but in this case, this is uh, one of the symptoms of Phytophthora. So the foliage might have a slightly, slightly lighter color. It may wilt on warm days. It may go from yellow to bronze to brown. Seedlings may die within a few weeks of infection, and large trees can take two to four years to die. Okay, here's a group of Port Orford Cedar. So management includes avoiding, avoiding soil compaction, which reduces drainage, uh, reduced construction, heavy foot, tra foot traffic, machinery. Um, one thing they've done at the Arboretum is they have some Port Orford Cedar that have been surrounded by other materials so uh, people that visit the Arboretum can't actually step on the root systems because they've definitely had some issues with this. They've also tried incorporating organic matter to uh, kind of introduce some beneficial organisms. And if you are going to plant something there, you want to use something that's resistant. And of course, sanitation. You need to get rid of every part of that plant. Okay, downy mildew gets a number of uh, things, but uh, vegetables, ornamentals, flowers, grapes, cereal crops, and mustard family. Here we have it on Rudbeckia. So you get pale green to yellowish spots on the upper surface and then they turn more yellow as they get larger. 
and then you have this grayish white fungal growth on the underside of the leaves. So this is something to consider when you're trying to decide whether you have powdery mildew or downy mildew. Powdery mildew will have white growth on either the top or the bottom or both, but downy mildew will only be on the underside of that with the white fungal type growth. Okay, here it is on radish seed. Here it is on spinach. You can see it's yellow on top, but if you turn the leaf over, you're going to see some uh, fruiting bodies on the underside. So management includes good drainage, no overhead watering, removing infected plants and plant parts, destroying diseased plant tissue, rotating the crops yearly, providing good air circulation. And here's late blight on tomatoes. Um, this is the same disease that killed the potatoes in Ireland that caused the potato famine. So it's not a true fungus, but it's treated as such. It affects the leaves, stems, and petioles, and fruit, and it can kill a plant within a few days. So during dry periods, it's not doing anything, but it's still there. It's just kind of inactive. And then um, once it's wet, of course, it'll reinfect. But you want to try to use a tomato variety that reaches maturity quickly and then protect it from rainfall. So you want to keep the stems and branches away from the ground. You want to plant blight-resisted tomato varieties. We've got Legend, Juliet, Hybrid. I'm sure there's others as well. Intercrop with non-solanaceous plants. So you don't have two tomatoes right next to each other. Perhaps you have something else that's in a completely different plant family. And then you want to have wide plant spacing. Management includes uh, sanitation, destroying volunteer plants. Uh, if you've grown tomatoes in your garden, you know that quite often you'll see some seedlings come up in the spring. You might want to remove those. Um, avoid moving through the garden area when the foliage is wet because you can be a vector for this. And then avoid planting anything in the, the solanaceous uh, family, um, potatoes included, unless it's uh, blight resistant. You want to keep water up the leaves and stems, water in the morning, and then something like bitter nightshade is in the uh, solanaceae, so it's actually going to be harboring the disease. You do want to get rid of that.